Hello. Can everybody see me and hear me? Hello, hello. Hey guys, sorry I'm late. Uh, we had some technical difficulties here, um, but we should be up and running now. So I'm gonna introduce myself real quick. Uh, my name is Dustin Evans. I'm the art director uh, for Neymar Junior Comics. And uh, thanks again for tuning in today. Um, if you guys are like us, you're uh, looking for things to do right now, you might be cooped up at home or out of school and looking for something to do. So what we decided to do, we're gonna do um, some how to draw lessons. And uh, today I thought we could start by drawing um, one of the social monsters from our uh, new comic book series, Social Monsters. Uh, one second here. Got to bear with me. I'm new to this uh, streaming thing, but hopefully we're going to do a lot more. There we go. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Okay, one second here. I'm trying to get it to All right, so All right, okay. Well, it looks like we're in business here now. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, A little bit of drawing here. So uh, this is um, a character from Social Monsters episode seven. And over here we have, uh, you can see the artwork that uh, one of our talented artists, artists Fernando did um, of the Terracotta Army. And uh, so uh, we're gonna learn how to draw one of these guys here today. And we can take a look up here. One of the cool things about Social Monsters is each issue features a different um, sort of um, element from history, something from a different museum. And so this, is this issue features the terracotta army that the crypto curator has brought back um, as the terracotta army that you can see here. So no spoilers on the issue if you haven't gotten there yet, uh, which if you haven't, what are you waiting for? Go to uh, neymarjuniorcomics.com and check it out we've got all the comics are free you can get on there and take a look and find out what all happens with the terracotta army so okay enough uh talking and uh, again apologize about the wait there while i got the technical things figured out but we're ready to get some drawing done here so grab your pencil or pen or uh, tablet whatever you've got and the first thing we're going to do Okay, one second, sorry, I hear that we can't see my screen. Okay, got share screen. Screen. Okay, guys, sorry about that. One second here. Can you guys see it now? I'm just gonna make sure everybody can see the artwork here. Nope. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. One second. Bear with me here. One minute. Let me find out what's going on. Hmm. Okay. 
One second, sorry. This is my first time doing this, and clearly I'm not well versed in this. I'm usually drawing all day, right? One second. Share screen. Okay, I'm sorry about that guys. One second here. I think we might have to just finagle this for now. How about that? This is a kind of a janky way to do it, but we're just going to roll with the punches here. All right, so like I was saying, this is the uh, the original Terracotta army that the Terracotta army is based on in Social Monsters. And so that's what we're going to try to draw today. So if you guys are ready, I'm going to hold this camera in place and uh, just start showing you how to do this. So again, apologize about the technical difficulties here, but no worries. Uh, what software do I use? I use um, a mixture of Clipart Studio and Adobe Photoshop. Um, so I like to do... Um, I like to draw in the clip art studio program because it's uh, very natural and fluid, you know, kind of feeling. And uh, then I'll even do like the flatting and the, uh, the basic colors in there as well. And then I'll take it over to Photoshop to um, do the extra coloring. Okay. So I think everybody can see what we're doing now. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on some, actual drawing here okay so first thing i like to do is just start with what would be uh the cat's head and really when you're you're drawing you just want to start laying out your basic shapes so this guy's going to have kind of a diamond shape almost like where the the hair kind of flares out so just start with kind of a rough, almost kite-like shape there. Sorry about that. I'm trying to watch two screens at once here. Okay, so here you see we've got this. Uh, once you get this basic kind of oval square shape going, you can come in and draw some, very lightly just draw some guidelines for the face. So this is kind of going to divide him in half here and then across that way so you've got kind of a basic shape and you know this is going to be the center of his face here this center area will be a good place to kind of start from uh, so we'll just kind of sketch in a nose there just a upside down triangle like that once you got that uh, I want you to add two more triangles on top of his head for his ears. And maybe your Terracotta has some battle damage. So maybe he's got like a chunk taken out of his ear here. Something like that. Feel free to, you know, make him as unique as you want. That's kind of the cool thing about drawing is you can uh, make it all your version of what you want add your characteristics your pets characteristics that sort of thing uh, whatever you want to do to have fun with it 
Okay. Making sure I didn't miss too many questions there. Okay. So uh, once you get your triangles on top drawn in, let's go ahead and kind of rough in his mouth. So for that, I just want to do like kind of a half circle shape here. And that's going to be one side and then just do the other side the same. And so you've got his mouth going there. And these guys are a little bit vicious, uh, as you can see over here in the comic. So let's go ahead and give him some, maybe a pointy tooth down here or something. Like that. And let's go ahead and rough in his eyeballs as well. So again, I kind of like to just use these sort of triangle shapes to sort of build out the structure of the face for the cat. And uh, these guys are, like I said, they're kind of, they got some attitude. So kind of like uh, our cats here at the house, which you might be able to hear in the background. I've got my door closed and they're, uh, <laughs> they're usually in here. I call them my interns. So they're wanting to uh, get in on the drawing action right now. So they're rattling the door a little bit, but Okay, so once you get the eyeballs kind of roughed in there, we can add some pupils, which again, uh, you know, a drawing, a lot of a lot of drawing is just basic shapes, just kind of stuck together, and you can just kind of think about how things are, uh, you know, when you start to look at things, how they look together as just basic shapes. So we've got a triangle here, 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 and then this kind of diamond shape. So now that you've got this, you can just draw for the inside of the ear. You want to do like a little, another triangle inside. And we're just drawing here. So I'm going to shade this in a little bit as well as we go here. Just to show that this is kind of on the inside of the ear. So And don't be afraid to mess up because sometimes you mess up and it becomes something really cool. Like say I accidentally whoop, made a line there on his face. Maybe he's got a scar because he's kind of a rough and tumble cat here. Or a Jellico cat for Cats fans. All right, so let's add some whiskers to this guy. I, I like three on each side. You can add two or three. And while we're here, let's go ahead and kind of define this face a little bit. All right, so we got a really good start on his face there. So let's go ahead and start kind of roughing out the rest of his body. As you can see here, this one that Fernando drew, which is super awesome. He's got the whole gang here. Uh, he's got some armor, you know, to match with the, from our reference photo up here. So what we're gonna do, what I like to do, and this, this goes for drawing any figure really. Um, I just kind of use the same principles. This just happens to be a cat. So maybe you wanna, um, you wanna start with like the spine or a rough shape just to kind of give you the layout of the, of how the animal is going to look. See, I don't really like that one there, but maybe he's going to stand with his chest puffed out and kind of looking tough here. So we got this line. This is kind of going to represent the middle of his body and his spine right there. And then you want to draw another line for like his shoulders, just to kind of give you an idea of how, how his stance is going to be. And then his hips would be, well, actually, let's do this. I'll show you. Once you get your baseline, you can kind of come in and then just do another overall body shape here. And I'm just doing kind of a larger shape at first to kind of show you guys. Uh, but then I'll kind of come back and kind of break it down a little bit. So like here, you can see this will be like the top part of his leg the bottom part 
the top and bottom and maybe his tails fluffed out here and a lot of the a lot of the way i draw to get like action and uh, dynamics and stuff you just want to do kind of a quick line to show the energy you know and it, it just gives your drawings a lot more fluidity and so you just can kind of come in and add some hair to his tail there it's all kind of roughed out so let's get some arms on this guy he needs some arms if he's going to be doing battle right so again i'll just come out here with another sort of basic shape and again don't be afraid to mess up a little bit like look at this look what i did here this arm's a little bit bigger this one's a little bit a little bit off it's no worries just draw over it and then let's give him a couple circles for his hands so we got kind of our basic shape here So now well, let's give him let's go ahead and give him his uh, feet paws, his paw pads down here on bottom. And again, I just kind of like to think in terms of like the outline, how that's gonna look. So let me darken this up a little bit so it shows up on the screen a little better. There we go. Okay. All right, so now that we've got that done, kind of adjusting this a little bit, so make sure you guys can see it okay at home. All right, so now the fun part. We've done all the hard work. We've got everything laid in and sketched out. You wanna come in and we get to add his armor, maybe give him a sword, stuff like that. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start with his waistband. Okay, we got a question over here. It says, I struggle uh, with scale when drawing. Uh, you got any tips? Yeah, um, definitely. You know, scale can be tough. Um, you know, uh, I'm trying to think. So for me, um, sometimes I will, if I'm working digitally, I can draw something smaller, you know, and then scale it up or down. So say you're drawing a person. I'll just do this real quick doodle here. You got a person here. And let's say you wanted to draw a car here as well, right next to him. Maybe it's a delivery truck. Okay, now the problem here would be the scale's a little bit off because if this was true, this guy would be, you know, uh, really big compared to the car. So uh, if you're working digitally, uh, you can just do this, come in, select him, and size him down like that. So now he was a, he was a giant guy. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. And. Okay. Sorry about that. I'm pressing the wrong button. Okay. Multitasking. Okay, there he was. Okay, so this is how he did look when he was larger. Uh, so sometimes if in terms of scale, what helps me is if I, I draw something and then I think about... Um, Okay, what sort of size would this guy be next to the car, right? So we know that a regular sized person is going to be, he's got to be able to climb in that door and ride in that vehicle. Sorry about that. Let me redo that because my camera was off. Okay. So say he's this big. Well, that guy, he's not going to be able to get in the truck. So let's make it make them a little bit smaller. So I guess what I'm saying in terms of scale, sometimes it helps to draw something that you know the scale of and put that next to the thing that you're um, having issues with uh, the, in terms of size. Uh, for me, uh, when I very first started drawing in comics, it was kind of tough because uh, everything was pen and paper and I like to draw, you know, and I, I would draw on like eight by 10 paper, you know, just small paper. 
And uh, then I learned that comics are drawn on much bigger paper. Uh, so instead of 8 by 10, it was 11 by 17. And uh, so it took me a really long time to learn how to draw big, you know. Um, so it just takes a lot of practice to go from drawing something really small, you know, down here to really big. Um, but now it's a little bit easier now because we've got digital. Um, so a lot of times I'll actually draw things too big and I'll have to go back and scale it down because uh, I got so used to drawing on the big comic book paper, kind of the old school way. Uh, so what I was doing here uh, is I was adding in um, some of the armor detail while I was talking there. And uh, you can do whatever you want, really, on the armor. Again, we're just trying to kind of do like over here in this reference photo with the, the terracotta army. So I'm just going off of that and sort of adding that sort of armor to the cat itself. So I got this, you know, they've got this kind of scarf looking thing here. And then the armor itself is actually super cool. It's really intricate and has all these little compartments, which makes it great for drawing because you can just kind of make it like a, a grid almost on there. Uh, so another question I'd gotten um, that I was going to address was actually about our comics and Neymar Jr. Comics. Um, what's my favorite comic book uh, that we're working on right now? And that's kind of a tough, it's a tough question because that's like asking what's your favorite pet or what's your favorite, uh, you know, your favorite kid or, or friend. Um, but I'm going to say... Uh, right now, I'm really loving Social Monsters just because, um, you know, all the cool stuff is tied back to museums and things. And um, so it's it for me, like I like to see in each issue, like what's going to be the featured monster? How are they going to turn this museum item into some sort of a, a monster, you know? So I'm thinking that's kind of leaning towards that. But man, the Ink series is so cool. I love the tattoos. All right. So what I was doing here while I was talking is just kind of going in and these basic shapes. Now you're just kind of adding their clothes. So like, you know, this half leg, this is about where the pant leg would end. And then you can start detailing this basic shape here. Oops, sorry, this basic shape here in the foot. You can start adding in the toes. And then from there, he's wearing some kind of like a, a sandal. So you would just want to, you would just add in a shape underneath his foot there. And then the laces, like so. And again, you know, this is your creation. So i uh, got a question. Is it hard to draw Neymar? Um, you know, um, I've gotten to draw him so much that it's, it's not, I don't want to say it's hard. It just takes a lot of practice, you know, cause anytime you're drawing the likeness of anybody, um, it takes a lot of practice to get their nuances down. I think the hardest part actually about drawing Neymar, that's actually an easy answer are his tattoos because he's got all these super cool, intricate tattoos all over his body. So you know, anytime there's a, a scene where he's got his, you know, shirt off or, you know, a tank top or something, you've got to make sure you get all those tattoos drawn in there correctly because, you know, his fans know uh, they'll be like, hey, why is he missing this tattoo over here? You know, um, so definitely that's that's the hardest part, I think, about uh, drawing him. But otherwise, you know, you just sort of approach it from the standpoint of drawing a basic uh you know, figure, heroic type figure. Like if you're drawing Batman, you know, you give him a cape and cowl. And uh, so, you know, with Neymar, you give him his uh, his hoop earrings and his tattoos. And uh, we've kind of adopted giving him a hoodie in uh, the Ink series because our thought was his tattoos are like his superpowers. So, you know, you don't want, um, 
you know, if you're a Batman, you don't walk around with your utility belt, you know, showing everybody, but like, check out my utility belt, you know? Uh, so we thought about that with the tattoos. Like if everybody knows you're the, you're the guy with the magical tattoos, you don't really want people to, to see your powers, you know? So, yeah, I'd say practice makes perfect. Um, when I very first started drawing in comics, I did uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, and I had to draw Jack Sparrow. Um, and uh, they wanted it to look like Jack Sparrow, but not like Johnny Depp. So that was um, a really difficult thing to do. But through a lot of practice and... You know, you use a lot of the props and stuff to sort of make their likeness rather than uh, the likeness of the person themselves. But so again, while I was talking, I was just adding in more detail on our Terracata. Uh, he's looking pretty good. He's about done. Um, let me see. I've got some more questions coming in via social media here. I wanted to answer some of those. What was the first thing I started to draw? Um, I can remember um, dinosaurs were probably one of the first things that I used to draw. I remember I had a book on how to draw dinosaurs. And the reason I had uh, this book was I really wanted to uh, look for dinosaur bones, you know, uh, be a paleontologist whenever I got older. And uh, turns out um, I enjoyed drawing so much, I kind of forgot to look for the dinosaur bones, you know. So I just kind of kept drawing dinosaurs and doing different things. Oh, uh, thanks, guys. Uh, let's see here. Get some more questions real quick. Um, somebody asked if I like drawing, uh, freehand or, you know, using a tablet or a screen and my answer has changed over the years. Uh, when I first started drawing, um, of course, when I first got a tablet, there was no, um, what do I want to say? There wasn't, um, like a screen you could draw on. There was just a, like a, a blank sort of mouse tablet and you would draw on that and look at the screen. And man, that was really difficult to uh, to get the hang of at first because you're doing something with your hand while you're watching the screen and it's kind of, it's a little bit crazy. But now they've gotten so advanced, you know, you can just draw right on the screen. And, and ever since I've gotten this Wacom tablet or Wacom, I'm not sure how you say it, to be honest. I'm from Oklahoma, so I'll call it a Wacom tablet. <laughs> but don't whack it. It's it's a pretty expensive tablet. You don't want to hit it. Um, but uh, anyways, once I've gotten one of these with the screen, it's been pretty amazing. Um, any advice for young artists who want to get started? Yeah, definitely. Um, so uh, the number one thing is never lose your uh just wanting to do it for fun i used to draw a lot and i would get so frustrated you know and i'd beat myself up about it um about maybe not being able to do something right or draw something the way i thought it should look and so um my number one advice is just have fun with it and never lose that try not to lose that it's not easy to do and the next piece of advice is just practice you know um, a lot of people say um, oh, you're, you're very talented or something like that. And it's like, you know, I, I appreciate that and I get what they're saying, but also I've filled tons and tons of sketchbooks with terrible drawings. Uh, I forget who said it, but somebody, uh, was quoted as they said something like, you know, an artist has to get out like a million terrible drawings before they get out one really good one. I don't know if that's exactly right, but just what they're saying is, you know, practice makes perfect. So the other thing is just, just keep on drawing and keep on learning as an artist and looking to other artists, see what, what they're doing that you like. And, uh, you know, that's kind of how I, I started. And so my style is just a mix of all the different, um, things that I love in art, you know, 
So I guess those two kind of go together. Just practice, 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 and just have fun, you know, because if you're having fun, you're just going to keep doing it and learning and growing. Um, another thing, like one of the biggest things that I ever did was just drawing from that helped me develop uh, my art skills was drawing from life. Um, so when I first started, I would copy uh, coloring books like I would draw like an Aladdin uh, coloring book. I would just replicate the pictures and, uh, you know, drawing it freehand or whatever, looking at it and doing that because a large part of drawing is hand eye coordination. Um, let's see. So, you know, maybe start by trying to replicate other things and then eventually, you know, look at uh, still lifes or people uh, walking around in the mall or something and, and try to draw that, you know, um, drawing from life is one of the most challenging, but it's also the, the best way to really grow your skills, you know. Um, so speaking of scale, it looks like I'm kind of out of room on my paper over here. So I'm going to scale this guy down a little bit so we can give him a sword because it's going to be a lot cooler with a sword. Um, how long did it take to draw inks? Well, um, our uh, interior artist for the first ink series is uh, Fernando um, Panish. I hope I said that right. Fernando, don't hate me. Uh, I'm not really quite sure how to say his last name. Uh, P E N I C H E, but Fernando is just super talented, uh, dude. And, uh, I did the cover for the series, uh, for the first four episodes and, uh, also the digital colors inside. And then Fernando did the line art and he is super talented, super fast. Um, so, um, how long did it take? I don't know. I couldn't really put a timeline on it because we, um, we did so many edits and just getting things right. You know, the first series is always the toughest to get right because uh, you're working through a lot of things, how you want things to look. Uh, but I can tell you that he turns in probably anywhere from one to three pages a day. You know, so he's he's a, a work monster, you know. <laughs> he does awesome work and he does it really quickly. Um, so always inspiring to get his stuff in. So I would say, you know, estimate two pages a day on a on our typical work day. More if there's a lot more going on or or more tattoos to draw, right? Uh, thank you. Okay, another question. Um, let's see, applications and tools. Uh, of course, I told you about the the tablet that I'm using and mango studio or it used to be called mango studio but now they call it clip art studio um, i love to use them for drawing um the hardest thing for me to draw um you know what uh that's an easy one actually pirate ships because pirate ships uh, i had to draw a lot of those when i was doing the pirates of the caribbean stuff and those uh there are a lot of components and even to draw one in a stylized way is actually really difficult um uh, you know, to make it look believable as well. Um, uh, one question I'd gotten on the social media is how to draw things, um, like how to pick an angle. And sometimes the the writer, uh, which like for Inked and almost all of our titles is uh, Jason M. Burns, super duper talented guy. And um he's really good at like when you're reading the script, it's kind of like written like a movie. And so, you know, he'll say like out wide on uh, Neymar and um, or not on Neymar, but on junior, you know, throwing a punch or something like that. And so, you know, it's, it's kind of our job is to interpret what he wrote and try to make it as dynamic as possible um, from that point of view. Um, so a lot of the times the script tells you and other times it's just like what would make this look the best or, you know, if you've got um, to do a scene where people are talking, how can you make it interesting? You know, if it's just two people talking, how how are you going to make mix that up? And a lot of times I like to look to like movies, you know, because they do such a good job of, you know, uh, just making things interesting. Maybe they're focused on a uh, hand or part of the face or, you know, something that somebody's doing at the time while the conversation's going on. So movies help a lot. Um, uh, 
<laughs> My favorite thing about working in the comic industry, that's uh, pretty easy. I want to say that's... Um, Well, it's not pretty easy. I take that back. There's two things that are my favorite things about working in the comic industry. One is um, the the creators I work with. Um, so it's kind of like uh, your birthday every day when you wake up and you get, um, you know, a new page of art or something from an artist. And I mean, it's just super inspiring to see other people's work. Um, So that's one thing that I love about it. The other thing is seeing the reaction uh, of people when you get to go to a comic convention and share your work, you know, in person or even on social media nowadays. Um, you know, anytime somebody retweets or shares something, um, it's just uh, super cool um, just to know that people saw your work and they were they enjoyed it or they were inspired by it or, um, you know. So I think that's really rewarding art, inspiring art, or just, you know, giving somebody something really cool to look at after a long day of work is uh, pretty great. Um, so I don't know. I am. Uh, will this video be on YouTube? Yeah, um, I'm not sure. It will be on our Facebook page for sure for at least eight hours, uh, from what I understand. Um, so be sure to check it out on there and we'll see if we can get it. put elsewhere also so you guys can go back and reference it and if you guys have any requests for future videos you want to see me draw something else or um, you know you have other questions or you want to learn about a different element or anything you want uh, hit us up let us know what you want to see me draw next what you want to learn and we'll do it up um, I'm going to try to wrap it up here I'm just throwing in some background color on here for for fun uh, while I was talking. Um, one more question. Oh, this is a good one. Bison or Roberta, who is your favorite sidekick? And that's from the, if you don't know, that's from the Ink series because uh, Neymar has a uh, tiger tattoo and a lion tattoo. And um, please draw Neymar and Bison next. Okay, cool. Well, we I bet we can do that. Um, who would win in a fight? Man, I don't know. That's again, that's such a tough question. I'm going to go with, um, Bison, I think, because he is just a force to be reckoned with. And, you know, lion's always the king of the jungle, right? But, but I would want to snuggle with, uh, Roberta because, you know, tigers have my heart, right? Hey, thanks, Fernando. There's Fernando. All right, guys. So that's um, that's how you draw a terracotta for terracotta from the terracotta army. So be sure to check out uh, NeymarJuniorComics.com and check out our app. Uh, again, those comics are all free, and uh, you know if you got a kid at home um, right now and they're out of school, the Social Monsters books are awesome because they're all ages. And they teach you a little bit about uh, museums in each episode. And the Ink series is super entertaining and action packed. And really, we've got a whole universe. So, I mean, we've, we say we've got an Avengers type universe, um, you know, over at NeymarJuniorComics.com or the app. It's all free. Check us out and spread the word. And of course, at any picture, you got to sign it. That's like the, the best part, right? Put your stamp on it. All right. Well, thanks, guys, for tuning in. And again, I, I apologize about uh, the technical difficulties at the beginning, but I think we're going to get it all figured out. And next time, let's draw uh, Neymar and uh, Bison or Roberta or just keep those requests coming. So thanks again for tuning in. Everybody be safe, be well, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.